Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Llama No Drama. This is the Stitch Along and we're moving on to the body next. So at this point in the tutorial series that we have actually just filmed the head here and uh, it's actually a lot bigger than you may imagine and today we're gonna move on to the body. So let's go to the instructions now and let's begin to do that. So if you have not seen the head yet, this is what it looks like so far. It doesn't have its uh, um, uh, pieces onto it yet. It doesn't have bangs and etc. But this is what it looks like. So the body is going to attach to here at some point and I'm not finished stuffing that and we're gonna move on to the body. So we're gonna go to page number two of the instructions and let's see what we're gonna get ourselves into today. And when we shift this down, we're going to then just start on page number two right here at the bottom. So let's take a quick look at that next. So on page number two, there's a total of 71 rounds. <laughs> 71 rounds my friends. Let's just get this thing going. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna start off here in the instructions. So we are gonna do the first stitch very much like we did the first one. I'm gonna give you some instructions. If it's a full first stitch, I'll let you know. If we're doing decreasing, I'll let you know as well. So we're just gonna just sit back, enjoy the crochet and uh, you will need, <laughs> you will probably need a pot of coffee by the end of this today. Actually the head didn't take me as long as I thought it would. I knew it would take me a while but uh, I'm pretty excited about it and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for a yarn eater folks? This is gonna be a lot of fun. So let's uh, move on now to the body and uh, we're gonna start on round number one. Get your pants already and make sure it's sharp because we got 71 rounds to go. Let's get going. <laughs> so let's begin by making an adjustable ring. Remember in video number one also the um, other video we did for the series has a slower version of the magic ring or the adjustable circle. So now that we have it made and you can go back to that video if you want or the dedicated video in the playlist for that. So what we need to do is that we need to put six single crochets into the ring. So let's count those out. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then once you get the sixth one in, just pull up the loop like we did before. Grab a stitch marker to pull it through to hold it and then just pull things nice and tight. So the strand and pull it and then just secure it with the tapestry needle like I showed you before and I'll be right back. So as we begin we're going to immediately start in the very next stitch here with the first stitch. So we're only gonna do the first round of the first stitch and then in round number three we're going to do an expansion and as well as round number four. So it's it's a first stitch but there's expansions going on. So if you remember how to do the first stitch we're just gonna chain ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then just going into the next front loop only. So only the front loops my friends. This should not be your first video if you're doing this series because I've already covered this uh, more slowly. And then you're gonna do the first stitch in each one of the six. So there will be six loops of chain 10 when you get all the way around. So please do that. This is round number two. Now that we got the first stitch in, remember the last stitch is right where it's marked. So you should see six loops. One, two, three, four, five, six. We don't uh, count these loops normally. So let's turn it around now and let's get the, the loops that we need. So we need the back loop of the exact same stitch that we were in. And what we're going to do is we're gonna do an expansion. So there's gonna be two single crochets in each one of the back loops that are in that these um, the first stitch is in. So it's two singles in each. So one and two and I would recommend that you count and make sure that there's 12 stitches when you get all the way around. So just put two into the back loops as you're getting all the way around and make sure that there's 12 stitches by the end. Okay we're going to number four. Make sure you do move that stitch marker up as you're going around. So starting in the first one we're gonna do another expansion. So here's the expansion. It's gonna be one single crochet into the next and then the next one has two single crochets in it. One and two. Okay, so the repeat is one into the next and then two into the next one after that. And please do that all the way around. The magic number is 18 stitches. Make sure that you do have that count when you get around. Okay, round number five is a regular first stitch. It's just the first round of the first stitch. So it's that chain 10 stuff. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, and then front loop again and so you're just gonna go all the way around. Remember your last first stitch will be going into the one with the stitch marker in it. Please do that all the way around. This is round number five. 
Okay, round number five is complete. Now we're gonna access the back loops again and we wanna do another expansion round. So what we're going to do in the back loops only and if you're not sure where to follow, just follow the first loop and then that's where the first stitch is and then that's where your first back loop is. Okay, so our expansion round for number six is that there's gonna be two single crochets in the first one. So one and it's in the back loop only. Sorry, there's uh, two single crochets in a row. So the first one is one single crochet, the next one is one single crochet and then the next one has two. Okay, so let's try again. So the first two just fold back the loops to access so one and the next one has one and then the next one has two. Your goal is 24 stitches all the way around. Please verify your counts and then maybe at the end of number six. Okay, I verified I have my 24 stitches and now in both loops then starting in the first one we're doing another expansion round for number seven and so there's gonna be single crochets in the first three. So one, two and three and then two into the next. Please do that all the way around. This is round number seven so it's an expansion. Your goal is to, is to hit 30 stitches by the time you get around. So if you're following the expansion it will work out. Okay, let's move along to round number eight. I did hit my 30 stitches and we're back to the first stitch. So chain your tens, front loops only and let's continue then with this journey. So uh, chain tens, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and front loop only. Please do this. Uh, this is round number eight. Again, the first stitch just first round. Okay, round number eight is complete and now we're gonna do round number nine. It's another expansion round. I think and at this point in the tutorial because we've been expanding all along it's just easier just to tell you and you can do it obviously if you want to. So, so let's move on to round number nine. So round number nine we're gonna do an incremental increase which isn't kind of the same as what we're used to. So let's just start in the very first one. So starting in the first one you wanna do this so that you're getting 40 stitches all the way around. So the first two stitches are a single crochet. I'm all thumbs today. So one and two and then the next one has two in it. So that's your expansion round for this round. It seems kind of unusual but we're gonna be jumping from 30 stitches to 40 and that's the way to do it. So the next one here is one stitch, one stitch and then two into the next. So make sure you have 40 stitches all the way around. This is round number nine. So let's begin round number 10. So I do have uh, 40 stitches in there all the way around. So round number 10 we're doing another expansion. So we're, this one's really expanding at this point now. So the next first three in a row are all single crochets. So one, two, three and then the next one has two in there. One and two. So the expansion is one, two, three and then two into the next. Please do that all the way around. This is round number 10. Okay, round number 10 is in there. I have my 50 stitches. Round number 11 is the first stitch, just the first round. So the chain 10 stuff. So please do that, round number 11. Okay, we just finished another fur round and we're now moving on to round number 13, sorry, round number 12. And in 12 we are going to do another expansion. So just in the back loops only. We are then just going to put in, what does it say? Uh, four single crochets uh, in a row and then two. So four and two and this will bring us to a total count of 60 stitches in this. So um, the first four are singles. So one, two, three and four and then two into the next and this will be round number 12 and please do that same expansion going all the way around. So four and then two. That's what we're doing. Let's move on. So moving right along we just finished round number 12. So we now have 60 stitches going all the way around. So let's move on. It says now for round 13 to do the round three of the first stitch and if you recall the round three of the first stitch is just one single crochet in each of the two loops. So just a regular stitch all the way around. So please do that. And finally a nice one you don't have to think about right? So one single crochet in each all the way around for round number 13. So I now just finished round number 13 and what we're going to do round number 14 and then we're gonna form the neck opening. So I wasn't really sure when I started this um, part of the video whether I was actually at the back or I was at the front of the character. But now we're know, knowing we're at the front. <laughs> so here we go. So um, round number one uh, is required for round 14 which is the first stitch. So again your chain tens in the front loops only. Please do that all the way around number 14 please. 
So I just finished round number 14 which is round number one doing the first stitch. So now we're gonna be in the back loops only. We're now in the back loops only going to create the shaping for the neck. So we're gonna create an opening so that the neck will attach to it, it later on in the future. So let's uh, begin and here's how it's going to work. So in the back loop only you are going to just single crochet in the first one. So just making your way to the first one. Just follow the first one over if you don't know where it is the first one and what you need to do is then once the first one is in is then chain 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, oops just 18. <laughs> daydreaming here. So back on the project here we wanna skip 18 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18 and go to the 19th one and that's where you're gonna single crochet into the back loop. So now you've just created the opening here by doing that. So make sure that you're getting your fur out of the way and you're going to just in the back loop only just one single crochet in the remaining of the stitches. So technically speaking let's go on through there. So there's gonna be 42 single crochets and then one uh, chain 18 space here when you get all the way around. So please do this. This is round number 15 making space for the neck. Now that I've come all the way around let's do round number 16. So round number 16 we want to fill in the chain space here. We wanna go right into each one of the chains. So we're gonna start off in the very first one. Remember there is one single crochet before you get to the chain. And your goal is, is to have 60 stitches in this by the time you get around. So just in the chain work itself it's one single crochet and once you get beyond the chain it's just one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. This is round number 16. Verify that you have 60 stitches and then let's move on then to round number 17 from that point. So round number 17, 18, and 19 is the regular first stitch. No more expanding for this from this uh, moment right now. And so the remember the first one of the uh, the first stitch is the chain 10. The second one is the back loop only. Okay. And then the third one of the first stitch is just one single crochet in each of the two loops. So a regular stitch going around. So it's consisting of one, two, and three. So I want you to do rounds number 17 through 18 and 19 at this moment and meet me back here in just a moment. You should end up with the magic number of 60. So what I'm recommending to you is when you do the back loops verify that you do have 60 stitches um, in order to continue on so that it's not misshaping. Now the fabulous thing about this you're never gonna know if you have to fudge a stitch anywhere in this thing um, but you don't obviously wanna do that all the time but it's a great opportunity. So number 17, 18, 19 is the first stitch of 1, 2, and 3. Let's begin to do that next. I'm now gonna deviate from the instructions. It says sew the neck and the head to the body. I'm not gonna do that yet. The reason why is that I'm looking here and we have uh, a few more rounds to do. So 20, 21, 22 and then it says rounds 23 all the way to 58 is that we are going to do the first stitch which is rounds one through three. So we're going to decrease a little bit and then we're gonna do all of that and that's gonna take you to round 58. If you sew the head on now it's gonna get in your way, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait. You can still access the stuffing and everything once you get into this area over here but I would not sew on the head yet. I'm gonna wait for myself and then I'm gonna move on to round number 20. So skipping over sewing on the head yet I'm going to just carry on. So we're gonna go for round 20. It is one uh, round of just the first stitch so it's the chain 10 into the front loops. Please do that now. This is round number 20. Okay moving on to now round number 21. We're gonna do a reduction now. So we're gonna get smaller. So, so this means that we're gonna be doing less of these loops. It's only six uh, less loops but hey any less loops is even better for me at this moment. So um, I'm really enjoying this project. Because I am filming I don't really have the relaxation of watching television and just hooking away on my own leisure. So it's, it makes quite a difference but if I was doing this on my own I'd certainly be loving it <laughs> even more but um, we are about to do a reduction and then when we get to round 23 to 58 then I can go watch TV because it's just the same thing. And so let's do the reduction now for 20 21. So um, in the beginning here we want to go um, one single crochet in the back loop only. We're doing a reduction. So one and there's eight in a row. So this is two, three, four, five, six, 
seven and eight and then the next two are two together and I want you to keep doing that around. So the secret, not so secret, just look at the pattern. Um, it says that there's gonna be 54 stitches going all the way around. So make sure there is 54 and, and that 54 number is gonna be coming important especially when we do rounds number 23 to 58 as well. So let's continue to do the reduction for round number 21. So moving on now to round number 22. So it's just a round three of the first stitch. So just jumping into the first one here. We're just going to single crochet. Remember the magic number is 54. So we're just gonna do one single crochet in each and just verify that count and then meet me back here and then we're gonna do a long repeat which I will have you do and I will do quietly off camera and then I'll be back in after that. So uh, we just have uh, 12 sets of first stitches to do after this round. Okay, so I've just come all the way around on number 22 and 22 is the first stitch. So rounds 23 to 58 it is repeating itself 12 times. Now the way I look at it is that when I did the leg I, which I haven't filmed yet but you can see that there is four layers here. So one, two, three and four. So you can see that there was four repeats that were done in here. So my point being is that I would recommend to you is that I would put a stitch marker. So let's just do it while I'm speaking to you. So I'm gonna put a stitch marker in this round so that when I peel back this I'm going to be able to know how many layers of fur is in there. So there should be 12 layers of fur by the time I do that, that huge repeat of what is it? It's from 23 to 58. So I'm just gonna leave these, this stitch marker in play and just kinda keep it out of the way. And so when I peel back the layers from where I'm going to end up with my 12, this will be the one where the 12th one should be growing out. So what I would need you to do at this point is that I need you to repeat doing the first stitch. There's no increase. The magic number is 54. So 54 stitches. So the first stitch remember is the chain 10 loop. Then the second one is the back loop of that and then the next one is just one single crochet in both the loops a regular stitch like we just did. So I want you to do that a total of 12 times and you can count it and check it off if you want to or just put in your stitch marker and just look back at the layers of the fur that you'll see. It will take you um, quite some time so 12 times 3 is 36 rounds that you'll have to do and what I would do put on the music and let's enjoy and let's continue to crochet. So I'll see you back here and um, we'll get more and more of this llama done and we'll be back in just a moment here on video time but myself I'm sure it's gonna be a few hours. So when I last left you I put in a stitch marker here and then I did the rest here off camera and uh, honestly it took me about six hours so I'm not gonna deny that it took a while. Um, it was 7,700 and some odd stitches that I in order to go from here to here. Um, it <laughs> I feel like I crocheted the whole carpet for the house but it looks absolutely amazing and I'm really quite proud of it. So we're now going to move on to round number 59. So we've done the now the, the um, 12 times of the repeat pattern and now we're gonna start closing it off. So I am not gonna touch the head until I cannot get my hand in here comfortably. So I wanna be able to attach the head once I uh, get this a little more narrow and then I can apply some stuffing. So let's move on now to round number 59 which is just the first stitch once again and it's just the first stitch in the uh, first round only. So that's just the chain 10. So let's do this again and let's go around and make sure you're moving up your stitch markers as always. Okay, just finish one layer of the first stitch, just the chain 10 and now for round number 60 we're going to do a decrease and we're going to do seven double crochets or single crochets in a row. So just follow the first one where you attach and that's gonna be the back loop of the next one. So it's gonna be seven in a row and then put two together. So this is two, three, four, five, six and seven and then we're gonna start decreasing. So we're gonna put the next two together. So go in the next one, pull through, then one after that going in, pull through and then three loops, pull through all two and that's two together. So do seven and then two together, seven and two together all the way around and your magic number when you get all the way around is the number 48. Okay round number 61 here we go. We're gonna do another reduction and in both loops just like a normal uh, stitch is that we're going to do six in a row. So one, two, three, four, 
four. five and six and then two together. So going in, pull through and then next loop in, pull through and then pull through all three loops and that's two, uh, two together. So six and then two together, six and two together. This is round number 61. Round number 62, we're back to the first stitch. So you chain your ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because we've just done two rounds of uh, reduction, that means that there's a 12 less loops to make, which is <laughs> a very good thing if you ask me, but that's about it. And just do the first stitch then for round number 62. Okay, first stitch is now complete for round number 62, 63. Let's do another reduction. So following the first loop that you're in to the back loop, it's gonna be five in a row and then two together. So do five in a row and then two together for single crochet. This is round number 63. Okay, I can still get my hand in quite comfortably so I'm still gonna continue before stuffing. And we're moving on to round number 64. So 64 starting in both loops only like a regular stitch. You're just gonna do four in a row and then two together. So four in a row, two together for round number 64. So we're now at 30 stitches going around. So you can see that on the pattern if you wanna keep that. I'm just checking it off. Now we're gonna do the first stitch for round number 65. So again, chain, uh, chaining 10. I can still get my hand in so I'm gonna continue. So let's continue and do the first stitch, just the first round of the chain 10s and then I'll see you back here and we'll continue to reduce after that. Okay, we're getting closer and closer to the camera here. So we're going to now to go to round number 66 and we're going to do a reduction again. So starting in the reduction, just follow the first one over and it's gonna be three in a row and then two together. So three in a row and two together for round number 66. Going now to 67, we're gonna do another reduction and then after this I'm going to, my hands are getting a little tighter for that so I'm going to start. So the reduction is then two in a row and then two together, two in a row and two together. Please do this. This is round number 67. Okay, I've just finished up round number 67. There's 18 stitches here. I did uh, verify. I'm now going to stuff this character. So I'm gonna stuff where, <laughs> where it's easier actually at this moment. I'm gonna stuff by the head and I'm also going to grab my head and start stuffing that uh, nice and firm. Honestly, if you're cheap with the stuffing then this thing is gonna collapse. So you wanna be firm about it. The beautiful thing about this is that because of all the fur here, it's kind of easy to make it kind of bloated without really seeing it. The only thing you gotta watch for is in the face to make sure that you don't over bloat the face. So let's uh, start stuffing right now. Okay, now that I stuffed my character, what I want to do is that I want to nail the top part. So make sure that it's, you're looking at it straight on. So it's just almost a rough guess really. So I wanna mark it with a stitch marker. And this will be the top middle. So all I'm just doing is putting in a stitch marker so I can identify this later. Okay, and then I wanna identify the front middle. I'm gonna identify the side. I don't wanna impede with the sewing at all so I'm just marking it so that I can just quickly pull these out. And that's the other side. I don't know if this is really needing to be done. It's just I'd rather do it and then say it was a waste of time than not do it and then my head not being right. So I'm gonna take a look now at the base of the head and I'm going to identify the back, the front, the side and the side and I'll be doing that just like I did the other one. So I'm identifying the, the top here, the front and then the sides. You notice the long strand there for I left on so I can use that to sew. So I was doing myself a favor. It was just a guess whether to leave it there or not. It's easier to tell you to chop it off than it is to tell you not to. Put it on there so just going straight back. Okay, so now that we know this, what I want to do is right where these are marked, I want to put these two together. So I want to puzzle them together so that the tops and the tops are, oh my god, it's cute. So the back here, I want to attach here. So I'm going to take this strand here 
that is in the back and I'm going to drag it through where the other one is here. And I wanna do that for all of the sides. So just dragging it through. So make sure you left a long enough tail. <laughs> now I tell you right. So uh, leave a long enough tail. And then I'm just going to just tie up this into a bow tie. And then it will pull it back. And then you can see how it's gonna look before you do the sewing and etc. So please do that for all of them at this, mi at this moment. Okay, so let's sew it. So when we sew it, we wanna make sure that the fibers of the hair is actually on the outside of this. And starting right where you left it off with the head, I want you just to whip stitch. So you're just gonna jump across. Make sure you grab at least two strands just for strength. And start whip stitching this around. As you're passing by what has been marked with the stitch markers, you can just safely pull those out. Your goal basically is to make sure all these fibers for these hairs are doing out. So try to match the stitches as close as you can. If you have extra just trying to work it in and make it look good. I want you to take your time and uh, do a great job. If your head is drooping still after this we've still not done at the back so we can still stuff more um, fiber into the back side of this character in order to keep its head nice and tight. So you want to just continually do that and as you pass by things you can just simply just remove them and then just continue to go. So please secure the head on now. Okay, so my neck is uh, secured but when I lift it up it's a little bit too floppy for my taste, the head. So what I have done now is that um, now that I have things sewn you can or reorganize the, the fur. You probably will not even see the join. And now because I left the back end empty or open I can now continue to shove more, <laughs> uh, shove more um, fiber through the back end and try to fill in the neck a little bit more. I'm also gonna show you a little cheating technique that I would use as well and that's just because I can. So this is obviously not a character but it's an example. So um, this is the one I did on the cruise ship and some things that you can do that to help stabilize this. So for example I wanted this uh, back tail feather to attach here. So it's just using the same color yarn just to attach. So it looks like it's naturally doing it. This one here is just naturally sewn right here as well. So you wanna make sure that when you're going to do this it just makes sense. So for example the ice cream cone if you would notice and you peel back the layers here you'll notice that I attached it right here just to make sure that its hand did not open and etc. So you wanna be a really kind of strategic about this. Uh, honestly here holding this there's a pin up and it will, it's really tight and it's pinned so to cause it to turn. So what I wanna do with my sheep is that or my llama I keep it looks like a sheep to me at this moment is that I wanna pin back the neck so that the neck is actually a little bit more upright. So I've stuffed it to the max and I'm gonna show you how I would do it if you were me and I were you. So I'm gonna play operation on my llama. So I want the head just to be a little bit more upright like so. So what I want to do is that I wanna go in using the same color. Have confidence when you do this by the way. So what I want to do is I don't wanna pin back the neck so that it's actually kinda of sitting more back like this. So how I'm gonna do it is that I'm just going to put in the fibers or the yarn in, or the hook in. I'm using the same color so it's pretty much invisible and I'm pulling it through. Right where I wanna pin it down to I wanna do a test and it's probably right about here. Okay, so I'm going to take my hook and grabbing that same strand. Now because this is using those little fun fibers like so you can really hide stuff like this. So what you could do if you were me I would actually go right through some of these loops so that it's actually right on the inside of the project. So just pulling it through the loops and therefore the loops don't get crushed underneath. So just do the, all the loops that you think need to be done to where you wanna pin it. So now attach it to where you wanna pin it back to right there and pull through. Now feed it through the areas which 
all the loops are kind of lining up now. So feed it back through to where you had put it through the loops. And pull. So when I go to pull on this, so let's just tie, not a knot, but just the first part of the knot. And let's see where the head is going to rest when I pull back. So it should pull but everything back. So help the head go back. And once you're satisfied with that, just tie it into a knot. This is not cheating. This is <laughs> totally appropriate. And you might wanna do it a couple times. And so now the neck is a little bit more upright. And because it's buried inside the fibers in this particular case, you could sew in the ends. But why would you bother when the loops are gonna cover it anyway? So then what I can just do is to just cover it. You wanna be confident that you got it in right and there for the neck. And then it will be upright. And if you have to do it again, then you have to do it again. But it will give a lift to the neck. Okay, so let's move on to round number 68. And 68 is another first stitch, just a chain 10 stuff. We're almost done and uh, it's gonna get a lot tighter from here. So make sure that um, any um, loose areas that you think it needs to have more stuffing, now's your final chance to sh shove uh, stuffing into the hole. And if not, then it may be a little bit loopy or droopy. So just be very careful and make sure you're confident and start doing your first stitch for one more round. So this is the chain 10 stuff. So let's do round number 68. Okay, so I did the first stitch and this llama is too big for the filming dust at this time. So it's huge. It's actually a lot bigger than I thought. So, and I think I'm a loose crocheter too. So it's the size of a pony. So what we have here is that we're round 69. We're gonna do a reduction. So in the back loops, then we're going to put in single crochet in the next and then two together. We'll do that uh, 12 times. Make sure that before you do anything at this point, make sure that your character is completely stuffed because the next round, next three rounds, it's, it's game over. <laughs> so let's uh, begin round 69. So it's one in the first and then uh, the next two together. Please do round 69. Okay, round number 70, we're gonna do single crochet in the next and then two together just like we did uh, last time. So we're gonna do that. So single crochet and then two together. It'll be eight single crochet left and then the last round is gonna be a first stitch and then we're just gonna pull all the loose ends in tightly and then continue. Let's do round number 70. Okay, round number 71, we're gonna do the first stitch into the eight single crochet and then you're just gonna leave a long strand and then you're just gonna weave that with the tapestry needle. Just go in and out of the open hole that's left and then pull it shut and then you're good to go and that will conclude our body. So that's it for the llama for this week and it's actually looking pretty cool and uh, next week we're gonna do the tail, the ears and the legs. We'll see you next week and this is the biggest week probably of them all and definitely the most work of all.